Uh, first of all, it's, I have to say it's extremely intimidating to be saying anything in, in front of uh, the great Raghu Rai, in my opinion, possibly the greatest Indian to have ever lifted a camera. So, Pranam Guruji, or uh, uh, the other thing is, I would like to please take this moment for all of you to reflect for just a second on, on uh, my uh, uh, mentor, philosopher, friend and guide, uh, Gautam Rajadex, who, if it wasn't for him, I would never pick up a camera, honestly. And uh, his passing was actually quite shattering. I, 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 was, I was deeply, deeply uh, affected by that. Uh, so Gautam, wherever you are, thank you for everything, really. Uh, I went through an incredible transition period in my life a long time ago. I was uh, academically bright and I got some really good grades, which basically meant that uh, I studied a lot. And uh, I, I get into UDCT, which was the best chemical engineering institute in the country, and apparently in Asia at that time, some 60 seats on an all India basis, and one third of them in, in the reserve category. So it was quite incredible that I got in the first place. And in one year, I realized that I would quite easily be the world's worst chemical engineer uh, because I hated what I did. Then I met a wise man who, who said to me that 95% uh, of humanity goes to work and 5% makes a living at what they enjoy. And I was very clear that I would uh, uh, be in that 5%. I didn't know what I was going to do. I enjoyed the process of taking pictures and I enjoyed writing. And at that time, it seemed like writers were slightly left of center carrying uh, jholas and uh, wearing khadi and sitting at uh, uh, the Samovar Cafe opposite Elphinstone College and discussing the problems of the universe, which they were never going to solve anyway. Okay. So, uh, so instead of a, a potential uh, uh, <laughs> profession in what looked like penury, I thought, hey, you know what, I enjoy taking pictures. Besides, in my chemical engineering class, out of 60 um, uh, students out there, there were exactly three girls. So I figured my odds of meeting hot chicks was a lot better if I <laughs> <laughs> if, if I had a camera, no, I'm just kidding. Anyway, so my, my dad, uh, who is the eldest of five, he's a master's in mathematics, and uh, the other, his other brothers are in suitably uh, professional professions, like uh, chemical engin engineering, CA, architect, and uh, doctor. So I told him, you know what, I think I'm going to be a photographer. My dad said, that's interesting. And uh, what are you going to do for a living? <laughs> so, uh, which is when actually Gautam came in, and I didn't know him from Adam. I, uh, realized that any picture I liked, I look, looked at the credit and I realized that there was the same guy. So I tried to get his number. I knew nobody from advertising. So I called up, uh, I looked the phone book and he was unlisted. So I called up every Rajadash in the phone book. No kidding, true story. Until I found somebody who was willing to give me his number. I still remember the number today. It's 3693150, by the way, in case you want to test me. And I called him. I said, you don't know me, but you know, I need your help. I'm 19. I have no clue what I'm doing. He said, come over to Lintas. I work there and uh, spent a lot of time and, and then spent two days with my dad, which was the big deal. Uh, so, you know, it was time well spent for me because it honestly changed my life. And I like telling this bit because in case anyone's at a crossroad ever, it's, uh, uh, it's a good place to be as long as you know where you're going. The truth is, if you're passionate about what you do, you can be good at it because Raghu's still taking pictures and uh, doing them as well because it's what he lives for. And as does Fozan, as you saw from his incredible images. Um, what I want to actually really touch upon today is the birth and genesis. I've done, I mean, I've been a, a pretty much a commercial slut my whole life. So, uh, so I've shot for lots of ad agencies, for lots of commercial cli uh, clients, and uh, uh, if I have to Personally, self-analyze uh, uh, myself. I think I'd be a very competent advertising photographer. And, uh, you know, I'll deliver above us a certain line whenever there is. But at some point, I had enough of listening to people. So I just want to quickly touch upon the Kingfisher story, because I think it's more than just taking photos. Actually, what's come out of it is perhaps ins inspirational in different forms for different people and can lead to a whole lot of stuff later. Okay, so um, 
One day at a beach in Goa, I'm um, sitting there, true story, and a uh, bunch of lovely women run by, and it's really warm, and that's the only time that I would actually have a beer, otherwise I'm not a beer guy. Is it okay to discuss things like beer in a state like this? <laughs> okay, I mean, at some point, does the, does the uh, anti-alcohol cavalry burst in through that side door and arrest me or something? Because that's the case, let me know. Okay, I'm j just checking. Nah, there we go. I've, 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 I've heard that story, but no one's called me out yet. But anyway, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we, so we, uh, uh, I see these lovely women going by. I'm having a beer. It, it's apparently has a 90% market share. That's ridiculous. How can you have a 90% market share in anything? So apparently in Goa, Kingfisher has a 90% market share. And I said, okay, there's a germ of an idea somewhere. And I thought we'll do a cross between Pirelli and Sports Illustrated. Um, Pirelli is available. That went off. I have no idea what it says anymore your uh, comp, you might want to tap that screen. So um, the, uh, the Pirelli is sent only from the desk of the chairman and uh, Sports Illustrated you can buy, but Sports Illustrated is swimsuits and Pirelli is just, well, women. So um, I knew Dr. Malia only socially and I made a dummy with some friends who did some scrap art together and uh, showed it to him. Uh, I, mean, I, I called him up. I said, hi, you remember me? We've said hello at that party somewhere. She said, yeah, yeah. She said, uh, can I come and see you? I think I have an idea. I said, what is it? I said, no, I, I need like 10 minutes of your time, wherever. He said, okay, uh, I'm in Goa on Sunday. He was building his house, so he said, come by. So I go to Goa. I thought, you know, I'll go in the morning, meet him for 10 minutes, take a U-turn, come back. I'm sitting there for the longest time. He hasn't bothered talking to me. We're busy eating something and drinking something. I realize I'm going to miss my flight, so I change it, which is the first of realizing that any meeting with Vijay Malia means you clear the decks for the next 24 or 48 hours and carry a passport sometimes because you never know where you might land up. Um, so I, I had this whole presentation ready, and I start talking to him, and he goes into one third of it. He says, great idea. How much money do you need? And I'm like, I have no idea how much money I need. I never thought you'd buy this this quickly. So he goes, uh, well, are you going to tell me or not? Because you tell me now. So I gave him a number off the top of my head. We made a net loss of some five, six lakhs in the first year. Best loss I ever made. And um, uh, then after that, in all fairness, they've thrown everything, including the kitchen sink, behind uh, and the considerable firepower of the UB group and uh, done to it what they've done. And here's the cool thing. On day one, the only thing I told them is, OK, this is between you and me. Okay, you hate it, you can slap me, not a problem. You love it, you can take the, the, you know, any credit. He's been very gracious to point it in our direction whenever. I said, but with no disrespect intended, I don't want to deal with an agency on this at all. Okay, I'll handle everything from start to finish, including your printing. And that's the only way this will work. And I'm under no illusion that this is the Kingfisher calendar, which is yours, shot by me. You're perfectly within your rights to get anyone else. It's your property. It's not the Atul Kasbaker <coughs> selection of photographs brought to you by Kingfisher. At no point am I under that illusion and neither is he. But I need to handle it from start to finish. And that because I believe that if we put it to a subcommittee, then a camel, as you know, is a horse designed by a committee. So uh, which was the fun part. Now what we've done along the way, which is interesting, is we've layered it in many, many different ways. So there are different points of interest for people. First things first, we were the first people to actually shoot a behind the scenes making off. Today, any crap shoot happening for anything, some stupid cutouts I did the other day with a famous cricketer for a random product, and it could be any one of 18 things with his hand like this. Okay, uh, just change the product over here <laughs> and it works. Uh, but uh, there's a behind the scenes making off video that's going on. So in the first year, we had somebody fly out with us and shoot it at our expense and said, let's see where it goes from here. And it resulted in the most incredible mileage on FTV for about a year and a half. Okay, so now it's become like pretty much standard operating procedure for anyone to have a making of which then goes into all kinds of uh, digital media applications later. You'll find it in some random site somewhere showing up. Second thing is it's acted like a launch pad now for some of the best talent in the country. This has happened, some by design, some by accident. 
from Katrina Kaif with Deepika Padukone, um, Pia Trivedi, Yana Gupta, uh, Ujjwala Raut, her sister Sonali Raut, um, Angela Johnson, and now Nargis Fakri, who's debuting in Rockstar. Uh, it's been pretty incredible, actually, how many people. So every year we get bombarded uh, across the board at, the, at UB as well as here for women wanting to get a break through the calendar. At a subliminal level, there's a lot happened for the brand because all of a sudden there's the ownership of a space. If you think of theater, you think of welcome group, you think of pace bowlers, you think of the MRF Pace Academy, and, and so on and so forth. In a dipstick test done for uh, uh, like a hamburger, McDonald's, that kind of thing, uh, they had an astronomical return on their investment in, when, they, when they tested what the veracity of this was, including on things like coffee with Karan. So the point is, I just wanted to leave something with you guys in terms of going above and beyond just in the commercial space to think beyond being a supplier. From day one, and honestly, uh, I got a mail from Aditi which, which uh, said, you know, bear yourself, talk to us really honestly and straightforwardly. I'll, I'll tell you this, from day one, and I really don't mean this sound any way except as just plain fact, I've always seen my name with a little circle and a C or an R at the end of it, okay? I believe in some strange way that I'm an active contributor to a creative process in this entire conglomeration of commerce as we see it. A picture that I take for a company results in some visual uh, happening out there which acts as an influencer, which goes out forth and makes somebody buy that product or that service, which results in a value to that company as a result of which, someone is getting paid his salary and then he sends his kids to school. In a twisted, convoluted sort of way, I am part of that process and I believe this from the core of my being. I do not think of myself as a supplier. When we first came and started taking pictures, for some reason in advertising, you were referred to as a supplier to drive me insane. Okay? Uh, the second period of transition right now is, is popping up and it's, I find my life in this very strange area of flux and um, you know, I'm beginning to ask questions, maybe you turn 40 and you start asking these things, who am I, what am I here for and at some point I think that you know, maybe there is a greater purpose to my existence on this planet than having made pictures. So I haven't found any answers yet. I've been going to Isha Yoga and doing some wonderful meditations with Sadhguru and uh, I think at some point something is going to snap in my head and uh, I'm going to do something really radical. But uh, until then, keep the faith. Taking pictures is an adrenaline rush for me. I hope it is for you. And uh, uh, later during uh, the Q&A, if you want to, want to ask me any questions apart from Yana Gupta's new phone number, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you very much.